we, we've got to get out of this thinking that old school is best, right? We need to break down anatomical motion and physics and neurology and understand what makes an exercise good, what makes an exercise compromised, and then choose wisely. Lifting a lot of weight in a compound movement does not automatically mean that each participating muscle is working in its capacity. Doing isolation exercise does not mean that each muscle is getting less benefit, even though less weight is being used because you're getting more magnification. Just as an example of how physics works, all right, so here you can see that I've put this hook here with a much shorter distance than here, right? The, both of these trays are empty, right? Both of these trays are empty, and yet the one on the right falls, right? So this just shows you how a longer lever magnifies everything more. If I put the same amount of weight on both of these trays, this is going to be heavier, right? So this is the compound exercise. This is the isolation exercise, right? This is what you're trying to do when you're squat. You're having to use a whole lot of weight because you're, because you're not getting efficient mechanics, right? It is foolish to load your skeleton, your spine, more than you need to just to get enough muscle loading to get the muscle growth you want. So let's stop obsessing about how much we can deadlift, how much we squat, how much we overhead press, how much we bench press. This, these are old machismo, foolish things to concern ourselves with. Let's be smart about this, right? Let's start thinking about how much load each participating muscle gets when we work it. We want to make sure that by the time we get to 60, 70, 80 years old, we aren't crippled. We aren't having spinal fusions. We aren't having hip replacements. We aren't having knee replacements. We aren't having shoulder replacements, as we see a lot of these veteran old school bodybuilders having. We've seen this, right? And they think that's just the price you pay. No, that's the price you pay when you do exercises that are not precise, that are not, that require you to use more weight, that require you to distort the joint that is, that is in play during that exercise. There's a better, smarter way to develop your physique. I won last November, not only my age division, but the overall AAU Mr. Universe using only isolation exercises. And I've only been doing isolation exercises for the last five years now, I've learned a long time ago that it's not wise to use these exercises that create so much skeletal strain and do not give you more muscle growth. What is this? This is an analogy on the left of a compound exercise and on the right of an isolation exercise. On the left, we see a bucket out in the rain. Yes, that bucket will fill, but look how much rain had to fall around it. Look how much wasted energy, wasted effort fell all around that bucket just so you could get enough to fill the bucket. Yes, people do build physiques using compound exercises, but it's like this bucket in the rain. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of wasted effort falling around without being productive, without actually going into the bucket. On the right, that's an isolation exercise. It's precise. All of your effort is directed directly at the muscle you want to work. Nothing is wasted. It's, it's, it is the best way to eliminate systemic fatigue, improve your recovery between workouts, protect your joints, protect your spine, not get sick and tired of working out because, you know, you get, feel like you got hit by a truck every time you work out. This is the way we should train. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If they try to tell you otherwise, tell them, what, we, what you just learned here today, that there's all these physics-related components and all these neurological components that play into whether or not an exercise is truly loading your muscle as much as you think it is. It is ridiculous to strive to do more chin-ups, for example, or to strive to do more squats. I, people say, how do I do more chin-ups? What can I do? To That's supposed to be, an exercise is supposed to be the means to the end. The goal is supposed to be that you use the exercise as the tool to get the physique, to improve the strength, to get healthier. It's not supposed to be that you do the exercise to improve the exercise, right? I mean, who cares how much you can chin up? Who cares? I mean, you, you might care, but for the wrong reason. I'm encouraging you to be wise, to not beat your body up over short-term bragging rights that could easily hurt your joints and, and give you less 
physique development than you think you're actually getting. I've just shown you just this much right here, but I believe it's enough for you to understand that there's science behind this. There's a lot of stuff here that can benefit you, can benefit you in your training. It can help you get more development with less energy spent, less wasted effort, less risk of injury, and it can help you with your clients. All of these things I touch base on, reciprocal innervation, active and passive insufficiency, bilateral deficit, all of these things are explained very clearly with lots of illustrations and videos so you can see how these exercises are done, which exercises are the better exercises, why they're better, and you will be, in fact, on the cutting edge. You will be the fitness expert that no one else is. This is the stuff that is cutting edge. This is the stuff that's real. You will impress your clients. You will get more clients. You will get better results in less time with less effort when you understand biomechanical principles as taught in our course. It's imperative that you not waste any more time and it's imperative that you not waste your client's time nor expose them to risk of injury. We talk about balance training. We talk about what that is, if that's really as beneficial as you think it is, why it might not be, how we're being misled by so many aspects of the fitness industry. Don't be vulnerable to all this commercialization, over-commercialization, misleading by the industry. Let us be wise together. Be part of our family. Learn what you need to learn in order to be truly a good physique practitioner and personal trainer.